بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His companions, his household May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam If we were to look at the reasons why we are happy, when we are happy, we will find that there is only one reason whereby we will be truly happy in a continuous way. And that is when we are pleased with the fact that Allah is our Rabb and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Nabi and Islam is the deen that we are following. When we are pleased with these three things in totality, in a way that our life moves towards the three rather than away from the three, wallahi, we will taste a sweetness even in the morsel of food that we put in our mouth. Now you might ask, where are we heading? The month of Ramadan is around the corner. All of us, including some of the non-Muslims who witness us, they feel the difference in the month of Ramadan as soon as the moon is sighted. There is excitement. Between the sighting of the moon and the beginning of the first Taraweeh is a very short period of time. It is such a transformation within that hour or hour and a half, two hours say. Such a transformation that everything changes completely and totally. And we have Taraweeh as we are walking out of Taraweeh we are full swing in Ramadan, but we only saw the moon a few hours ago. Why? Today I want to pick up a hadith of Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu anhu, wherein he says, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say something. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, when he heard this, he used to repeat it often. What was it? He says, al-Imani. The sweetness of Iman or the taste of Iman. Iman has a taste, okay? That means when you're a believer, you taste it. How do you taste it? At times of difficulty, you are still smiling. You are still okay. You know, when something doesn't happen your way, you are still smiling because you know it ultimately always happens Allah's way. You want to buy something, the deal did not go through. If you're a true mu'min, you will smile and be happy at the decree of Allah. But when your Iman is weak, you become sad, you become agitated. Why did my friend get the deal? I didn't get the deal. That's a sign of distance from Allah. It's a sign of weakness of faith. When you are happy, no matter what you've lost, you are actually content because you are happy with Allah. So if you look at Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttarib radiallahu anhu, he says that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the sweetness of Iman is tasted by he who marradiya billahi rabba he who is pleased of the fact that Allah is his Rabb I am happy that Allah is my Rabb what does that mean? Allah looks after me He created me He made me He's in control of me and I'm going to return to Him I'm happy with that which means I declare firmly that Allah is in charge I cannot move a finger I cannot hold this microphone up without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power He gave me to hold it, I wouldn't be able to do that. If He does not want me to get something, I won't. If He wants for something to happen, it will happen. So the sweetness of Iman is only tasted, or the taste of Iman, which is sweet obviously, is only tasted by He who is pleased with the fact that Allah is His Rabb in completion, totally. And مَرَّضِيَ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّ وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا And whoever is very happy and content with the fact that Islam is my deen. What does that mean? It means all the rules and regulations that are stipulated in Islam. I am super happy with every one of them. I have no objection. I have no rejection. I have no fling 
meaning blinking of an eyelid, no flinching at all regarding any one of those rules. I'm happy with all of them. If Allah said this is haram, it's haram. If Allah said interest is haram, it's haram. If Allah said pork is haram, it's haram. I'm not even interested in knowing why. Because I'm a mu'min, I'm happy. I don't even want to know why. I might understand some of it, but I may not understand some of it. So you do not taste the sweetness of Iman unless you are happy with Allah being your Rabb and with every rule of Islam being a rule that you have happily followed. Happy. If Allah says this is not allowed, I don't care if I'm suffering a loss. I consider it not allowed. Allah says in return, you taste the sweetness the others do not taste. You taste the sweetness the others do not taste. And the third thing, and the third thing is, I am happy and totally satisfied and absolutely believe in the fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Nabi of Allah, sent by Allah, the Prophet of Allah. Everything he did was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Afdalul khalqi wa akramul rusuli. The best of creation, the most noble of prophets of Allah. Beautiful, absolutely lovely. Once I firmly confirm these three things, I have to taste iman. That's the statement of the Prophet Iman. How do you taste iman? You're always a happy person. Now I want to go back to the issue of Ramadan. Why do we feel the difference? Because every one of us, including the sinful Muslim, when the moon is sighted, he has an intention, I'm going to quit my bed, right? Even if he has an intention, it's going to happen for the month of Ramadan. Before Ramadan, now we're in Sha'ban, a week left for Ramadan. Perhaps next Friday we might see the first Taraweeh. And what may happen from now, even those who are sinful, they start saying, hey, Ramadan is round the corner. I've got to buck up my ideas. Those who don't grow their beards, for example, they forget about what Gillette is during the month of Ramadan, right? They forget everything. They start growing their beards. It's just an example. So the intention is there, the practice already in full swing. And the sins people are committing, adultery, pornography, gambling, anything else. The month of Ramadan, they already say, no way, no chance. So much so that the non-Muslims say that these people are now real Muslims. But we were always Muslim. But now in Ramadan, no drinking, no gambling, no adultery, no fornication, no pornography, whatever else. People might not like these few words that we keep on repeating. The reason why we keep on repeating it is it's a reality. We don't need to hide behind anything. It's a fact. So therefore, once you have decided to quit things, what are you doing? You are getting closer to those three things mentioned in the hadith. Allah is my Rabb. Islam is my deen. The Prophet ﷺ is my Nabi. And you know what? When you get into the grave, those are the questions you're going to be asked. If you have tasted that Iman, the answer will be very easy. We can know the answer today, but if you haven't practiced upon it in the grave, you will fumble for the answers. Who is your Rabb? What is your deen? Who is your Nabi? Who was Muhammad ﷺ? Some of the questions in the grave, all the same. So, the sweetness of the morsel of food that you put at the time of iftar is very different from the same food you're going to eat today. You know, some of us, we might have women folk in the house who prepare for Ramadan by perhaps making a few savories and freezing them. And sometimes they might fry a few or they might bake a few. They might decide to taste a few before Ramadan. You and I know it's the same batch. doesn't taste the same. It tastes very different because there is a sweetness of iman in the other one. Here, it's not there. Another thing, when you see the moon of Eid and there's no taraweeh that day, it's a different feeling altogether. It's a very different feeling. Why? This is the sweetness being spoken about of the month of Ramadan. When the iman and the level of closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absolutely amazing. It's on a different note. So this is why beyond Ramadan, we need to make sure that we get close to Allah. You will taste the sweetness. Let me give you some examples. Sometimes we get up very early for tahajjud, we read Salatul Tahajjud, maybe we've had a bath or we've cleaned ourselves, and then we come, we read Salatul Fajr, we go out, we feel so good when you sip that tea in the morning, one sip and you say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, my sustenance is halal, I am a brilliant person, I'm trying my best to be a brilliant person, and I, I've just fulfilled such a great act of worship for the pleasure of Allah. 
How Allah has blessed me with this cup. Allah has blessed me with tea. Other people don't even have water to drink. It's a different feeling because you are close to Allah. Umar ibn Khattabi radiallahu anhu, when he heard this, he used to keep saying, Raditu billahi rabba, wa bil islami deena, wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallama nabiyan wa rasoola. I am pleased, he used to say, I am definitely pleased with Allah as my Rabb, with Islam as my deen, and with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as my Nabi, and the Rasul who was sent to me, the Messenger. He used to keep saying this. It's a powerful dua as well. Raditu billahi rabba, wa bil islami deena, wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rasoolan wa nabiya. It's amazing. So my beloved brothers, let's try and earn the, con the contentment of this world by getting closer to Allah. The sweetness of the food we put in our mouth by getting close to Allah. Wallahi, when you're, when you're rosy, your sustenance is halal. That morsel tastes different. When you've stolen the money or usurped it or somehow fraudulently got it, it does not taste the same. You don't enjoy it because there is no happiness. You might have a little, you might have less, but you will be happy. You will smile. You will be okay, even though you may be going through problems and challenges one after the other. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through so many challenges. He was always smiling. He never ever complained about the situation. Rather, he complained about himself, his own weakness. He never said, this situation is terrible. I can't cope. I can't manage. No. He complained about himself. Oh Allah, I am weak. Allahumma inni ashku ilayka da'fa quwwati. According to one hadith at the time of Ta'if and some other places as well where he says, Oh Allah, I complain to you, I'm the one who's weak, subhanAllah. But he was always smiling, he was always happy. He never ever questioned Allah's decree. He said at that juncture, during the problem of Ta'if that, Oh Allah, if you are happy with me, then there's nothing I'm worried about. For as long as you are happy with me, I'm okay. If Allah is not happy with you, even if you have the whole dunya at your feet, it's not good enough. And if Allah is pleased with you, even if you don't have anything and you die a pauper, in the eyes of Allah, you are the richest. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So I decided to share these words because Ramadan is around the corner. And from now, we should start preparing for Ramadan. How? I tell you, primarily, we need to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we should be practicing Raditu Billahi Rabbah. We need to improve the tongue. It's something a lot of us are guilty of. Improve how you speak. Wallahi, your mouth, the same mouth you say your shahada by. Be careful what type of words come out of that mouth, especially to your family members. We will pay a heavy price if we abuse our family members. We will pay a price in the dunya and the akhirah. The Prophet ﷺ says, خيركم, خيركم I'm sure we know that off by heart now. The best of you, best to your wives, best to your children. That's the best. That's the best. So we need to become best from now by, by learning to control our tongues. Watch what we are saying. Say good words. Utter that which is absolutely beautiful. Make someone smile. Imagine... إِدْخَالُ السُّرُورِ فِي قَلْبِ الْمُؤْمِنِ to, to, to put happiness in the heart of a mu'min is a great act of worship. What if it is your own wife? You go home, you tell her something so beautiful, amazing. What if it is your own family members? You make them feel good, your children, your, your parents, those who are related to you, you make them feel so good. If you are not going to do that, who do you expect to do that? Who? So this is why it's important for us to know if I make someone else happy, it's an act of worship. What if that is a person related to me? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. The same applies, we should stop lying. We should stop deceiving with our mouth. We should stop saying swear words. We should utter the dhikr of Allah. The, the tongue is actually a tool. If we do not occupy it with the remembrance of Allah, it will occupy us with the disobedience of Allah. If you don't wet your tongue and moisten it with the dhikr and the remembrance of Allah and good words, then it will occupy you with bad words, dirty words and so on. So be conscious of your tongue. Conscious. Conscious meaning, do you know there is a hadith where Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu was in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him to control his tongue. Amlik lisanak. And he says, 
O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, O Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, will we be penalized because of our tongues? And so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, O Muhammad, what do you think you are saying? And the people of Jahannam, would they be in Jahannam for any other reason besides how they use their tongues? Will they be dragged face down? That's the hadith actually says, will they be dragged face down in Jahannam for any other purpose besides how they use their tongues? Which means the tongue is absolutely important. It takes you into Jannah or into Jahannam. Into Jannah or out of Jannah. The tongue, be careful. Use it to remember Allah. Praise Allah. When you praise Allah, you get closer to Allah. Then we need to also make sure the ibadat that we engage in are proper. Don't rush in an act of worship. Take it easy. Don't rush in an act of worship. Take your time. Have a moment for Allah. So your salah that you read, your farad salah especially, and even that which is extra, make sure you've taken your time in it. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to read beautiful salah, amazing. There are so many stories of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, Salli salata muwadda'in. You should read your salah as though it's the last salah. Malakul maut is waiting for you. The angel of death is waiting for you. He's just waiting for you to finish your salah and you are going. Imagine if that was the case, what type of salah would you read? So read the salah like that, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, we have something to learn from them. They used to perfect it as best as they could, subhanallah. What about us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. In order to concentrate in salah, you need to rid your mind and your heart of haram and unnecessary things. We have a mind and a heart similar to a computer or the memory of your phone. If your memory is 64 gigabytes in your phone and you have unnecessary pictures, unnecessary voice notes, unnecessary things, every day you're downloading this and that which is not necessary. Then when you want to download something necessary, two things happen. One is your hard drive is full and two is the phone slows down so much. You press a button and you're waiting for three minutes for this application to open because you've got too much unnecessary things in there. The same thing happens to a computer. The same thing happens to your brain and to your heart. Too much unnecessary things. Argument with this guy. You have a deal with this guy that went sour. You have some problem with this. You have pornography in the head. You have music and all the other things piled up. How are you going to memorize Quran? All those Bollywood songs, Hollywood songs, Nollywood songs and Jollywood songs. We know all of them. Everything we know, off by heart. What about Surat Yasin? We don't know it off by heart. We still make mistakes. So this is why we say, rid it. Rid your mind and heart of unnecessary things. Sinful and even that which is unnecessary. Take it out. You will find your processing speed becomes quick. When you say Allahu Akbar, your concentration is in Salah. Because why? I don't have too much of... Uh, unnecessary things happening outside Salah. So in Salah, it's quick. But if there's unnecessary things, the minute you say Allahu Akbar, you know what happens? Your mind first goes, hey, you know, this morning I saw a very, very nice car. What happened? You are listening to the Imam supposed to be. He is telling you, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. You are supposed to say Ameen. It's only happening by default. It's not happening because you concentrated. Many people, when they, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين, without thinking, they say Ameen. Am I right? Ameen. Whether it's softly or aloud, depending on what you are doing, they say the Ameen. Agreed? Sometimes when the taraweeh is going on, the imam is reading from somewhere else in the Quran and he is saying another verse that ends in the same way, Baalin, and you hear the imam reading that verse when he says that Baalin, people are just saying Ameen because they are tuned to say Ameen every time they hear Baalin. That means your mind is somewhere else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. I've heard it with my own ears in the masajid. So my beloved brothers, let us realize this. Let us understand gaining closeness to Allah. Be happy with the decree of Allah. Strive towards pleasing Allah from now. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ used to fast in the month of Sha'ban a lot. So let us still fast the Monday, the Thursday. MashaAllah, tomorrow is Thursday. I encourage myself and yourselves to fast on the day. And the next, the, the Monday that is coming, inshallah, we fast on that day by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We try also to read the Quran. My brothers and sisters, you know, the link we have with the book of Allah will help us on the day of judgment. Because the hadith tells us, Al Quranu hujjatun laka aw alayka. This Quran will bear witness for you or against you. Simple hadith. But did you pick it up? 
How many times we've heard the hadith, hadith of this Quran bearing witness for you? Pick it up, read it, read it with a, with a good uh, heart while you are smiling. You know, when we read Quran, we look at it like it's a burden and we read a little bit and we struggle and we close it and put it away like, oh, at least I did something. Try and change that attitude. Be happy. Raditu. Raditu means I'm happy. I'm happy with it. So inshallah, in that way, we will definitely be able to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the last thing I want to say, my beloved brothers and sisters, is in the same way that we need to fulfill that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to search in our own lives. We need to search in our own lives, asking ourselves, what is it that I am doing that displeases Allah? What is it that I am doing that Allah would not be happy with? And we need to cut it off or we need to eradicate it. Bearing in mind, it's not too late. It will only be too late when sakarat comes to us, when the pangs of death come to us. It can happen to anyone anytime. So therefore, remember to take account of yourself before you are taken account of. You see, when the tax man comes and he, there is a raid or a blitz at your business and it happens to everyone. If your books are in order, you've already checked them. Your accountant has already done everything. You're a happy man. You just say, hey, speak to my accountant and you can go on a holiday. But when you haven't done the hisab and you don't know what's going on and everything is not in order, you lose your sleep. You lose your sleep. What's going on? What's happening? And so on. May Allah forgive us. May Allah grant us strength. But imagine the court of Allah is far more serious than that. It is far more difficult than that. If Malakul Maut comes and says, I'm taking you now, what are you going to say? Give me 10 minutes. Send me back one more day, five days. You know, take a bunch of bond notes and do what you have to come back tomorrow. That doesn't work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. My brothers and sisters, let's make tawbah from now. Because we don't know, Wallahi, if we're going to be alive for the month of Ramadan. None of us, myself included. I don't know if I may die before Ramadan. May Allah forgive me and forgive all of us. And may we become better people. Make an intention from now. That, Ya Allah, from now, whatever is happening, I want to improve myself. You will, tomorrow morning or tonight when you go home and you have a cup of tea or a morsel of food or a biscuit, it will taste different. Why? He is the sustainer, the owner of sustenance. You are pleasing him. He will make it taste different for you. They will, and that alhamdulillah. A lot of us, we eat. We forget to say bismillah. We even forget to say any other dhikr. We forget Allah. The whole equation is very void of including Allah in it. It's not there. We eat, we're happy. We walk out and we're gone. It was a good meal. We even forget whether it was good or not. We enjoy it. But imagine when you're a mu'min, you, as soon as you see the food, you thank Allah. Oh Allah, look at this. There are people dying without even a droplet of food. No even water. We sit, we drink. And what else do we have? We have food. We are eating. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So let's thank Allah. We say alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Definitely we should be repeating Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami deena wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallama rasoolan wa nabiyya. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanakallahum wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.